The halving itself is a supply shock. You know, the uh, supply of new Bitcoin introduced into the market uh, declines uh, each time that we have a halving. What we are seeing this go round is also a demand shock. The upcoming Bitcoin halving is in less than 30 days. Uh, with the introduction of 10 spot Bitcoin ETFs. Combined with the institutional demand from the Bitcoin spot ETFs. All of the inflows that are associated with that. This sort of aggressive buying of Bitcoin from institutions like BlackRock pre-halving is something we've never seen before. This is an atypical setup that we have going into a Bitcoin halving where you've got all time highs that Bitcoin and the crypto market cap is trying to get back to, but Bitcoin has already struck. What is that set up for this having to be different, perhaps, in the price action that we might see? How high could Bitcoin go post having based on history? And watch today's whole video. We'll talk altcoins. Yeah, so historically, halvings are sort of um, become a focal point in advance uh, because of the way that they reduce the amount of new supply and that impacts price because of the supply demand dynamic. Uh, looking at prior halvings, there is usually a bull market, an extended bull market after the halving, regardless of what happens before. You know, beforehand investors are trying to price in or speculate about the impact of the halving, but after it happens, it's like initiating a buyback program uh, for a stock. You know, investors can take views on that in advance, but once the program begins, the company's out there buying back its own stock every day, and that has an impact on the market. And similarly with the halving, uh, it will definitely have an impact. So the Bitcoin halving is not priced in. It will definitely have an impact on price. And even though Bitcoin has been dipping in these last several days, actually down around 17% from all-time high, we know why that's happening. We're watching grayscale outflows. And by the way, they don't have that much left. Bitcoin net outflows in the last four days total 1.8 billion, while inflows by BlackRock's and other funds have been unable to offset them. In fact, we've only had two red weeks out of all the Bitcoin ETF's existence. And as grayscale sellers are slowly exhausted, while BlackRock buyers, most of them haven't even started yet. Um, you know, a lot of these ETFs haven't even really started marketing their products to wealth advisors. You have very few wealth advisors that actually are recommending it to their clients yet. So we've yet to see the real kind of flow from alternative assets and uh, just you know retirement accounts, pension accounts into Bitcoin. That will come um, most probably later this year, early next year. So how high will the Bitcoin price go? And again, just to explain why Bitcoin crashed, political insider Anthony Scaramucci first talks the Bitcoin having and then explains how we always knew Grayscale was always going to have to sell. And you had the halving coming up. And so at some point, late April, call it around April 20th or the 22nd, you'll cut the supply of new Bitcoin entering into the market by half. You'll, you'll start spitting out 450 Bitcoin a day. And if you have this pace of demand, that should push the price up a lot. But remember... I would have never guessed that Grayscale would have been cut in half two months into the Bitcoin ETF approval. So what do you think is behind that right now? Because that's well, something I think tracking. it's a combination of things. I think bankruptcy trustees at places like Celsius, at places like FTX, Genesis, we could name them all, are flooding the market with their GBTC. And they're just trying to get a price above 60. So they're flooding the market. Is that what you've heard that FTX is? I think FTX is already out. I think already they out. sold a few weeks ago, but these other guys are still selling. So just understanding where the Bitcoin price could go. First, looking at past cycles and understanding one year before versus one year after the Bitcoin halving. We always see a rally into that event. We rallied over 400% over 100%, over 76% into the last three halvings. This tells us to expect diminishing returns as any asset gets bigger, the volatility will dampen. But it's interesting because a year before this halving, actually this is about uh, over a month old, meaning 50% is now out of date for this halving, we've actually already seen an over 140% increase into this having from the year before. What we are seeing this go round is also a demand shock. That does validate both the supply and the demand shock 
telling us this time could be different. But after the halving for one year, disregarding we, we could have a potential sell-off the weeks directly after, right? Buy the rumor, sell the news, very normal. But zooming out, one year, we've seen an over 700% increase, an over 280% increase, an over 400% increase last halving. And if we were to assume that we will see diminishing returns again, and maybe this time only a 200% increase, well, that would put the Bitcoin price one year out over 200% from where we are today, March, April, 200%. 200% at a top of over $190,000 per coin. Again, this is assuming diminishing returns. This is assuming that this time's not different, even though in some aspects, this time is different. Uh, but we also never hit an all-time high before the Bitcoin halving. And so now we've violated that rule. And so being at an all-time high, going into a halving where the supply is going to get cut in half, uh, I think people are like, oh, this could be different, right? Does this could be higher. Is that a typical event, though, that we should be anticipating? So I, I think what it just means is like we're in uncharted territory. Now, of course, people who hold Bitcoin are going to look at that optimistically and say, hey, uh, that means the price is going to go even higher than we thought it was going to go. Uh, another way to look at it, though, is just if we're in uncharted territory, anything could happen. Right. And so, you know, one of the scenarios people don't talk about is maybe we just go sideways for a long time and that'd be kind of boring. Right. Um, and, and so I don't know what's going to happen, but I do think that, uh, again, the beauty and the simplicity of Bitcoin is that it is the full expression of kind of your economics 101 class. And so from an investor seat, you're like, wait a second, if there's more demand than supply, the price is going to keep going up. This is an ongoing story. Be sure to click subscribe for one video per day, keeping you informed about crypto. And by the way, Altcoin Daily will be doing a live stream the day of the Bitcoin having an hour or two before into it. So again, have notifications turned on for the Altcoin Daily Bitcoin having countdown live stream. And in terms of Altcoin news, ChainGPT and Polygon Labs team up to boost AI powered NFT development. I actually want to put two different AI altcoins on your radar. One is AIT protocol, the other chain GPT, both AI infrastructure for blockchain in two different capacities. But the news today is this integration with Polygon. Chain GPT recently integrated its AI NFT generator with Polygon blockchain to facilitate seamless. AI powered NFT generation and on chain minting. So, this is where you can generate NFTs with AI. And this partnership promotes the NFT development process through Polygon's efficient framework to effectively streamline the entire process from start to finish. Now, Altcoin Daily recently did sign on to become ambassadors of Chain GPT. It's cool to see what they're building. And in a direct quote from the CEO and founder, he says, the chain GPT AI NFT generator is a truly awesome tool that has already achieved some major milestones, including generating over 21 million digital masterpieces to date. We are thrilled to work with Polygon Labs and believe that with its focus on scalability and our advanced AI infrastructure, together, we'll be able to make NFT creation fun and widely accessible. So if you like Polygon, you like this. And of course, quick update for AIT protocol, Einstein AIT subnet registration. We have successfully transitioned from subnet five to subnet number three on BitTensor. If you're at all confused by that, I encourage you to check out top five AI crypto altcoins for 2024. But now that AIT is subnet number three with BitTensor, Einstein is back with subnet three slot. Not only does their current subnet fill a huge void in AI model capabilities, but the AIT protocol is the team to build human feedback into BitTensor. So AI data infrastructure indeed. Grab your tickets for the roast of Altcoin Daily in Los Angeles. A special two-for-one deal is happening now. Link below.